I've long had an interest in plant breeding to, to create new cultivars that are not only more beautiful but that function better in the garden and I've been very fortunate to uh, spend time with the likes of Dr Keith Hammett who's one of the world's most celebrated plant breeders who produce these dahlias for example. Keith claims that breeding of plants is an art form and I agree with him. Look at the beauty of these flowers that Keith has created. So that's what motivates me to keep trying to produce new and improved plants. My first foray into plant breeding was with Hebe's. It came about when I was put in charge of the Hebe collection in about 1980 and uh, I loved Hebe's but frustrated with the fact that they got disease. For example, they got septoria leaf spot. You can see it on this Hebe here. Also, they got downy mildew and you can see it on the underside of this leaf here just starting to develop and so beautiful plants not always great in a garden particularly in Auckland so I thought well maybe I could develop hebes that were not prone to these ailments. So I used Napuka, the beautiful magenta flowered coastal species and crossed it with diosmophilia because I knew diosmophilia was very disease free and my first ever seedlings were these this is Wurri Charm and there's another one called Wurri Gem and they were a cross between those species. And straight away I could see that I had many of the characteristics of the parents which made them much better garden plants certainly than Hebe speciosa. So from there I thought well let's have a go at producing some more flower colours, some more foliage options and so that led to the likes of this one here which is Wurri Image which uh, I think is absolutely gorgeous. And this is Worry Desire, another of my hybrids. It not only has very nice deep rose pink flowers, but it has this beautiful new growth, which, you know, I think the foliage is even more important than the flowers because it's there all year round. I think Hebe Worry Mist is the best Hebe I ever produced. And so I'm using it as a parent, trying to create versions of Worry Mist, but with flowers and other colors. So Worry Mist has a white flower, I'd like to have the equivalent of Wurri Mist with say a pink flower, uh, getting towards a magenta flower, a purple flower, a lilac flower. And um, then I think that would be a great enhancement to gardens in this country. The process of breeding Hebe's is, well it's excruciatingly slow. <laughs> for me, I'm very impatient. First of all you need to determine your objectives. What are you trying to aim for? So here I've got Wurri Image, which is a very healthy Hebe, beautiful lilac flowers, but I'd like to have it in deeper flower colours. So here I've got Wurri Prince, which has nice purple flowers. So I'm going to pollinate Wurri Image with this, and to do that, I've picked an entire inflorescence. Then I find a very prominent style and stigma coming out of this floret here, and I'm just putting some pollen on to that floret. And I'll keep doing that as the florets open and that will lead to the formation of seeds. When it's ready for picking then I put it in a paper bag or an open container in a dry place and then I sow the seeds. From when I sow the seeds to I get seedlings to start evaluating well you're probably looking at at least a year and then it's probably another two or three years before you confirm that you've got a decent Hebe. So lots of patience, but most importantly, have a goal in mind, know what you're trying to achieve, and then you can monitor and evaluate against those objectives. So we decided with our hybrids to give them a name that made them immediately identifiable as having come from the Botanic Gardens, and we chose Wurri, which is a place name. It's a, a place very near to here. We thought that would make a nice prefix for all of the Hebe's we produced and the Manuka, so hence Wurri Image, Wurri Charm, Wurri Desire and Wurri Mist and, and others and, and so that name has now got good recognition. The Wurri Hebe's are now grown all over the world, they're grown in huge numbers in Europe um, and in, in this country as well and particularly Wurri Mist. I can go to any town in this country and I will see Wurri Mist in traffic islands, home gardens and public parks. And that's very gratifying, seeing my little offspring kind of <laughs> ornamenting the country and does give me a, a real thrill to, to see them. I've also played around with the breeding of ornamental manuka and uh, 
The inspiration for that really was getting some new material from the wild from Graham Platt who uh, selected material that he said was elite and it definitely was and this is an example of the material I got from Graham Platt and I also got material from Terry Hatch, beautiful pink forms of manuka from the far north and I thought well here's an opportunity to produce something that is quite different and uh, this is one of them, this is manuka or leptosperm and Murray Joan and if you look closely at those flowers they are fully double, uh, there are no stamens at all so it's obviously self sterile, flowers for ages, probably five months and uh, beautiful compact bush, so that's Murray Joan named for my mum but I named an, a number of them for people, women that I knew. So there's a Wurri Shelley, Shelley from our visitor centre. There's a Wurri Sandra, my wife, and, and other females that I knew. I just thought it would be nice to have that theme, but also to recognise some of the, the people that I really cared for. 